Good morning, friends. It's my pleasure to welcome you this, to worship this morning on this Palm Sunday as we gather together as the Fries Valley, Janaden Hutton, and Uricksville Moravian congregations. Our service does have a bulletin or program associated with it. Members and friends should have received that bulletin yesterday by email, and we hope to place a link to the bulletin in the comments below as well. I would again mention that as we film this online service, we are seeking to be especially conscious to matters such as social distancing, and so there will be some lags and delays as we move around the room, but we're sure you will understand. As is often the case as we enter into Holy Week, there are a lot of announcements. To expedite things, we've left a lot of the specifics to the announcement page, which you will find printed at the end of your bulletin. There you will find service information on our Holy Week reading services on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, including a link to download a copy of the Holy Week readings for yourself. There you will find information on our Monday, Thursday service and the approach we'll be taking to Holy Communion. You will find information on our Good Friday service as well. And you will find information on our Easter dawn service, including a link to download a copy of that service for yourself. Our 10 a.m. Easter Sunday service uh, will take place online, and we would also uh, mentioned that due to government guidelines, we will now continue the suspension of face-to-face -face worship until at least the end of April. So we'll continue meeting online like this throughout the month of April. In those announcements, you will also find information on how to submit prayer requests or special announcements to be included in our Easter Sunday 10 a.m. service. And in lieu of flowers, there's an opportunity for those who wish to provide an Easter memorial or tribute. Uh, they can provide that, and it will be included in our Easter bulletin as well. Again, more details in the announcements. And you will also find information on this. Our last call for the Lord is risen indeed selfies. And I'm going to say more about that. If you haven't done so, you have until the end of the day today to submit your selfie to be included in our Easter Sunday montage. Now, we want to say thank you to every one of you who has already submitted a quick selfie video. But we want to hear from more of you. And we want lots of faces from each congregation to be part of that montage. Now, most of us are pretty tired of hearing about social disconnection. So we want to make Easter Sunday a day of reconnection with the smiling faces of as many of our sisters and brothers as possible. Now, I know some of you are shy, but people here love you. You're with family, and we want your face in our Easter Sunday montage. So if you have a smartphone, even at this very minute, all you need to do is pull out your smartphone, go to your camera app, Click on the film or the video button, and there may be a button to switch the camera so it faces you like in selfie mode. Then you push the record button, and you say as loud and happy as you can, the Lord is risen indeed. And you stop the recording, push the share button, and send it to that phone number. You can text it to that phone number in the announcement page or email it as well. Or I believe you may also add it to our Facebook page. But we need that by this evening. So we want to hear from as many of you as possible. We'd love to have many faces in our Easter Sunday montage. This morning I want to offer special thanks to our organist, Jeannie Carruthers, our engineer, Jaden Stearns, and at this time I will invite our three congregational worship assistants and they will present to us the particular announcements of their congregations. We will welcome Brenda Parrish from Janaden Hutton, Linda Spring from Yorksville Moravian, and Connie Kinsey from Fry's Valley.
to Nathan Hutton announcements, Easter memorials will be accepted in the office or by email through Thursday, April the 9th. And we want you to reach out to your neighbors to see if they need anything. We have volunteers in place for pharmacy, grocery, and other trips. Good morning. These are the announcements for your Expo Moravian. Um, at this time, unless we can't, we will still be having ladles of love on April 14th. It will be from 5 until 6 o'clock and carry out only. If you know of anyone who could use a meal, please have them come up to the parking lot on that, at that time. Um, as a church and community, we've been experiencing, we have experienced people finding new and creative ways to connect as never before. For this, we are grateful. We also appreciate the guidance and leadership from many people, especially our governor, Dr. Amy Acton, and our own pastor, David Geiger. Also, the trustees would like to thank you for your continued giving during this difficult time. Announcements for Fry Salad Moravian. A shout out of thanks to Pastor Dave, our shared ministry team, and all who make our online service happen each week. We have had such positive feedback from our congregation, neighboring congregations, and people across the country who are grateful to be able to attend worship service during this pandemic. This has been an uplifting gift for so many. People comment on the music, beautiful music choices, the powerful message, the choice of scripture, and the children's chat. The response has been overwhelming. Our services are comforting and healing many people throughout these days of uncertainty. And for that, we are grateful for those serving. Thank you to all of our essential workers who are out there every day putting themselves at risk so that we may be safe in our homes. We appreciate you, we pray for you. Through our days of quarantine, there's a Facebook group, Peace, Love, and Jesus, where you can grab your coffee or tea and take a break throughout your day for a spiritual breather and chat. The Bible study of Mark Kelly's Rediscover Jesus has begun, but will be suspended throughout Holy Week. Holy Week will be reserved for the postings of our Moravian daily text each morning, our shared ministry readings and services, and an evening prayer as we talk together in faith, waiting for Easter Sunday. We do welcome your comments on these shared services the group is public, so anyone can jo join. And let us continue our worship service with our watchword for the week from Philippians 2, 7, and 8. And being found in human form, Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Sisters and brothers, please bow your heads with me as we join in a moment of prayer. Lord Jesus, this is Palm Sunday. And as we celebrate with joy your triumphant entry into the city of Jerusalem, we also welcome you with joy right now, right where we find ourselves at this very moment. This day, perhaps more than any other time in your earthly ministry, the crowds get it right as they gather around you, joining their voices in praise. 
Today, we can't gather in one place like we might wish, but nothing can keep us from worshiping you and offering, offering our praise this day, just as they did long ago, just as believers have done on Palm Sundays ever since. As the crowds long ago with words of praise welcomed you, Lord, into the holy city, we now welcome you with words of praise into our own homes and into our own hearts. Separate in setting, but united in heart, this day together we offer all glory, praise, and honor to you, Lord Jesus. Amen. We will be worshiping from the Advent and Palm Sunday, Sunday liturgy. Shout for joy, you heavens. Rejoice, all the earth. The glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people together will see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Rejoice greatly. Shout for joy. See, your king is coming to you. 
He is righteous and brings salvation. We praise you, the Lord God of Israel. You came to the help of your people and have set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty savior, a descendant of your servant, David. You promised through your holy prophets long ago that you would save us from our enemies, from the power of all who hate us. You have shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and have remembered your holy covenant. With a solemn oath to our ancestor Abraham, you promised to rescue us from our enemies and allow us to serve you without fear. So that we might be holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. By your tender mercy, you cause the bright dawn of salvation to rise on us. To give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The voice of the messenger echoes from the desert, calling us to prepare the way of the Lord and to make a straight path on which he may come. Let us confess our sins so that our crooked ways will be made straight and the rough ways smooth. Our sovereign redeemer, we join the people of Jerusalem, offering our own shouts of praise and celebration at your coming. Although we welcome you today with the multitude on Palm Sunday, we confess we have also stood with the condemning crowd on Good Friday. Our thoughts, words, and deeds have cried, crucify, we turn to you for help and forgiveness, gracious Savior, not because we deserve it, but because you are forgiving. Save us from our sinful ways and restore us to a life of loyalty to you. Amen. Through John the baptizer, we hear the Lord's promise. Turn away from your sins and God will forgive your sins. Let us pray. Eternal God, ruler of all ages, Graciously, you come to us in order that we might come to you through the merit of Jesus Christ, strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Help us and all your children to respond to the call of your gospel with faith, love, and hope. God of faith, you created humanity to serve and praise you. And even when we rebelled against you, you promised to send a Savior to redeem us from our sins. Strengthen our faith in your saving work through Christ, as you chose the people of Israel to hear the promise of redemption through the prophets. May people today believe in your good will for all that you have made. God of love, you fulfilled your promise as a redeemer in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Grant us the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that we may share your love with the sick and the afflicted with the poor and the homeless, with the victims of injustice and discrimination, and with all who are experiencing times of trouble. God of hope, you comfort us through our Savior's promise to returning glory at the end of time. As we await the coming of the Prince of Peace, let us not despair. We long for you to inspire all the nations and peoples of the world to turn to cooperation and nurture rather than to hatred and destruction. God of faith, love, and hope, to you and to you alone we pray. For you are our God, the only God, forever and ever. Amen.
Lord, you have kept the promise you made to our ancestors and have come to the help of your servant people. You remembered to show mercy to Adam, Abraham, and Sarah, and to all their descendants forever. We praise you, Lord. You are enthroned in glory, yet you came and continue to come for all who will receive you. We praise you, for you are good, and your mercy endures forever. To you be glory and power, forever and ever. Amen. If we were gathered together in worship, this would be the time in our service when we would share with one another our joys and the places we witness God at work, and also our concerns, the places we would especially welcome God's touch and welcome the prayers of our sisters and brothers in Christ. In just a moment, our congregational assistants will share the particular concerns shared in each congregation in order to be included in the service, a reminder that all requests need to be received no later than 11 a.m. Saturday. Prayers of the people for Janathan. We ask prayers for Mabel Thornton, who fell a few days ago. We also ask for continued prayers for Lorian Geiger for healing. Pray for world peace. God bless us all. Prayers for your school congregation. We pray for Randy as he starts his treatment of radiation tomorrow. We pray for Radana for continued health for her. We pray for my family for my sister Pam, her children, and her husband. All seven of them have had in the past two weeks the coronavirus. The, my nephews and niece and my sister have all healed and, and recovered quite nicely. My brother-in-law still is um, suffering with the virus and this is day 10 for him, and he is still having fever every day and, and just feeling miserable. So please continue to pray, pray for him and all the family. Um, also, continued prayers for all of those, especially those who don't have anyone at home, and they're there by themselves, and they can't enjoy being around other people. Prayers for the Prize Valley Congregation. We wish to lift up Pauline Cutshaw, whose family is working in a coronavirus environment. For the family and friends of Jeannie Denker. For Ruth Gray. And for Shana Angel's friend, who is fighting with pneumonia and waiting for her test results for COVID-19. Let us now quiet our hearts for prayer. Gracious God, you are our rock, our shield, our fortress, and our deliverer. 
In you do we trust. Lord, we come to before you now as members and friends of these congregations, lifting before you these requests that have been shared. Oh God, during this time, more than ever, we are conscious of our need for you. Lord, we lift before you perhaps others who have not been named aloud, but whom we carry in our hearts right now. Lord, please remember those affected by the coronavirus and their families and their caregivers in our communities, but also around the world. And we include in that number the families who have lost loved ones to this terrible pestilence. Lord, we lift before you health care workers, first responders, and medical researchers and others on the front lines of the fight to contain and eliminate this virus. And we remember their families as well. We pray for those who are struggling in the face of economic hardship, layoffs and threatened layoffs, business suspensions. We pray for educators and students in the face of closing schools, closing school buildings and the challenges, the special challenges these pose. We pray for those in positions of leadership around the world, the decision makers, that you might grant them wisdom and guidance. We pray for those in quarantine and self-quarantine, at home and in nursing homes and care facilities that you would draw near. We pray for our congregations and your worldwide church that we may be faithful in our witness to you in word and action during these perilous times. We lift these prayers before you now as we unite our voices together in praying the prayer you taught us to pray, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus said to his disciples, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied, and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. The story of Palm Sunday begins with this interesting fact. Jesus needs a ride. Now, yes, I can't help but believe that Jesus, the one who fed multitudes with a couple of loaves and fish, the one who calmed the storm and changed water into wine, I can't help but believe that he could have taken care of this on his own. But instead, Jesus invites others to help. Two disciples are tasked with going into a village and picking up a donkey there. And when the donkey owners ask questions, they're to simply say to him, the Lord has need of it. And Jesus assures the disciples that those words will be enough. And that's exactly what happens. Today, Jesus could bring in his kingdom on his own, but instead he invites you and I to help. He offers each of us the honor the privilege of being a partner with him in what he is doing. We do this by offering our time and energies as the two disciples did, and we do this by contributing from our own resources as the donkey, donkey's owner did. Now this morning, we will not be passing an offering plate as would be the custom in our congregations, but there are different ways that we can offer our tithes and gifts 
As outlined in our bulletins, we can mail in our offering, or perhaps our bank offers an online bill pay option. And now, with the help of the Moravian Ministries Foundation, we can give online either by credit card or automatic bank transfer. May God bless you and honor the faith you demonstrate by your ongoing generous support of your congregation during this difficult time. gifts that have been given this last week, the gifts that are being given even now, and the gifts that will soon be given to your purposes and to the furtherance of your kingdom. May you bless those gifts, and may you multiply them, and may they bring pleasure to your heart. We ask and pray these things in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. At this time, we will enjoy some special music offered by Sister Jeannie Carruthers.
So rise and shine and give God your glory, glory. Rise and shine and give God your glory, glory. Rise and shine and give God your glory, glory, children of the Lord. What song do you sing when you're washing your hands? A lot of us do the birthday song, but I like that song a little bit better. Maybe I'll add a little hand sanitizer too, just for good measure. Hi friends. I remember when I was a little girl, we were always outside, never in the house, playing outside from morning till night. And when it came time for supper, our mom, mom or dad would come out on the back porch and they would yell at the top of their lungs because a lot of times we weren't in our yard, we were up in the woods someplace, and they'd yell our names at the top of their lungs. And so we reluctantly come back in the house. So we'd sit down for supper, and, and my mom would always say, did you wash your hands? Well, you know, half the time we would say, oh, yeah, but we didn't really wash our hands. So she would say, go wash them. And I'm sure you hear this all the time. Um, you know, we've learned that even though our hands don't look dirty, we know that there are germs on there that can make us sick. And especially during this difficult time right now, we know that we can very easily get germs on our hands. We can touch this, we can touch that and then maybe touch our face or whatever, and those germs go into our bodies. So I know that we spend probably more time than ever before washing our hands. My hands are so dry from probably wash, washing them a hundred times a day that they're just, they're cracking open. Anyway, my story today comes from Mark 7, Verse 5, one day a group of Pharisees, and Pharisees were like the, the top people at that time, the leaders, they noticed some of Jesus' disciples were eating without first washing their hands. They asked Jesus, why don't your disciples follow our tradition? They eat without first following our hand-washing ceremony. Jesus became a little bit upset with this because he knew these people and he knew their hearts. What he said was, and I'm going to put it in, in kid-friendly terms, he said, you might have clean hands, but you don't have clean hearts. They were more concerned with following traditions of men than they were with following the word of God. What I'm asking from you today is that, yes, it's so very, very important during this time of pandemic and quarantine to wash our hands all the time. Come back in the house, go out of the house, do whatever, touch anything, wash your hands. But I don't want you to ever forget that the most important part is not to have clean hands but to have a clean heart, not have terrible things come out of our bodies and our mouths, but to always show that what's inside is clean, along with our clean hands. So if you would bow with me in prayer, and I, this is a repeat after me, Heavenly Father, we know that it is important to have clean hands. We know that it is important to have clean hands. But even more important, but even more important, is to have a clean heart. Is to have a clean heart. Create in us a clean heart. Create in us a clean heart. So that all that we say, so that all that we say and do. And do. We'll honor you. We'll honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Our first scripture reading today comes from Psalms 118, 1 through 2, and 19 through 29. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Let all Israel repeat, his faithful love endures forever. Open for me the gates where the righteous enter, and I will go in and thank the Lord. These gates lead to the presence of the Lord, and the godly enter there. I thank you for answering my prayer and giving me victory. The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Please, Lord, please save us. Please, Lord, please give us success. Bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God shining upon us. Take the sacrifice and bind it with cords on the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Our second scripture comes from Matthew 21, 1 to 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them, a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee.
Let's pray. Lord, as we gather and worship this Palm Sunday, surely you have something to say to each one of us. We come before you now with open hearts, open ears, open minds. May you speak to us your personal and specific word, we pray. Amen. Okay, so let's be honest with one another. This is not the way we're used to celebrating Palm Sunday, is it? Normally this day we'd be gathered in worship in our congregations. We'd pick up our bulletins and receive our palm leaves. We'd greet friends with handshakes and hugs. The service would begin and our voices would be lifted together as we sing our Palm Sunday hymns and celebrate Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Hosanna, hail to the son of David, Hosanna. How very different this Palm Sunday is as we find ourselves clustered in our homes, tuning into our devices. Singing the Hosanna in our living room is just not quite the same thing as singing it in church, is it? How do we relate to Palm Sunday during difficult times like this? Well, in this season of coronavirus, in the most difficult hours, the darkest moments of this pandemic, there can, for many of us, be a feeling that comes across, a feeling experienced by many people. The feeling is kind of like a weight bearing down on them, like a dark cloud hovering over them, like a wet blanket dampening their spirits. Do you have a sense of that? When this virus or any outside power imposes feelings like this upon us, there's a word to describe that experience, and the word is oppression. Oppression. We feel oppressed by the weight of stress and worry posed by the health danger of the illness itself. We feel oppressed by all the secondary effects the illness has brought with it. Isolation, financial worries, lifestyle changes, disruption. These are oppressive times, aren't they? But did you know that the original Palm Sunday took place in a very oppressive time as well? We're dealing with the oppressive effects of a virus. The people in our story are dealing with the oppressive effects of an enemy occupation. The Jewish people are living under an enemy occupation. They are living under the boot of the hated Roman Empire. They are living in, a, in oppressive times too, just like us. Now, in one sense, the two may seem very different, but in another sense, they're not that different at all. The Jewish people were dealing with the daily threat of danger, just like we are. The Jewish people were dealing with the loss of freedom, just like we are. The Jewish people were dealing with conditions beyond their control, just like we are. Every day, because of their trying circumstances, the Jewish men and women had to contend with an oppressive feeling in the air, a feeling of heaviness, an oppressive weight on their spirits, which, if they gave into it, threatened to drag them into the mire of discouragement and despair. They were living in oppressive times just like us. And this is something that makes the original events of Palm Sunday quite remarkable, but it's also something that most of us may be able to appreciate this Palm Sunday more than we ever have any other Palm Sunday before. Palm Sunday is about a group of people refusing to surrender to the oppression. It's about a group of people who refuse to let it get the best of them. Palm Sunday is a group of people standing up together and openly defying the oppression of their day. They do it in an act of defiant faith. They express it in defiant praise. Now, if we look to their example, they can offer you and I 
the way that we too today can resist and overcome the oppression of this infernal virus. They show us defiant faith expressed in defiant praise. Let's take a closer look at the story, and I hope you'll see what I mean. On the first Palm Sunday, as the people celebrate the arrival of Jesus in Jerusalem, they do something and they shout something. These two things are kind of like the trademarks of Palm Sunday, and they become such a familiar part of the celebration of this day that we can take them easily for granted. But do we actually understand what they mean? What do the crowds on Palm Sunday do? Well, they wave palm branches, right? That's defiant faith. And what do the crowds shout on Palm Sunday? They shout, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. That's defiant praise. Let's start with the palm branches. Why do, they, why do they wave them? What's the significance of that? How, what do these have to do with defiant faith, we might ask? Well, many people think of palm branches as a sign of peace, but they're confusing a palm branch with an olive branch. But we know today that in the mind of ancient people, a palm branch wasn't a sign of peace. It was a sign of victory. Add to that that for the Jewish people in particular, the palm branch had become a symbol of Jewish patriotism and national independence. During periods of Jewish independence, when they were free from the occupation of enemies like the Romans, the Jews would mint their own currency, they'd mint their own money, and that currency would feature, guess what? A palm branch. And that was a symbol of the Jewish nation in its independence, in the same way that our coins today might feature an American flag or a bald eagle or a famous U.S. president or monument. Waving palm branches during Jesus' arrival into Jerusalem, as they did, was a way that the people could send the message that they may be under the rule of an oppressive power, but they had not surrendered to it. They had not given up. In open defiance of the enemy occupation, they were expressing faith, defiant faith, that their deliverer was coming. And that brings us to what they say. What they say as Jesus arrived, they shout, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Now, the word Hosanna actually is an appeal. It means save us, or God, save us. And by calling Jesus the son of David, by pointing to Jesus as the rightful descendant and heir of King David, the greatest Jewish king, and the ancestor of the Messiah, they are exalting Jesus and praising him in the highest terms. They are praising Jesus as the Savior, the Messiah, the answer to their prayers, the fulfillment of their faith, and the one who will end their oppression. And of course, while they're doing this, this is happening right under Roman occupation, right under the noses of the Romans. And according to the Romans, there's only one Lord, and that Lord is Caesar, and Caesar does not tolerate rivals. So these Palm Sunday crowds are, crowds are praising Jesus right on the doorstep of the ancient capital city on the eve of Passover, the greatest Jewish national holiday of them all. And they are praising Jesus at Caesar's expense. Their words are an act of open defiance against the enemy occupation. They are claiming that Jesus is their true ruler, even greater than the oppressive power that occupies their land. This is praise, defiant praise, offered in faith, defiant faith, in open defiance of their oppressor. It's kind of like this. Try to imagine this. Imagine what would happen if the USA was, heaven forbid, conquered 
by an oppressive foreign power. Imagine foreign troops with machine guns occupying the government buildings, strict curfews, secret police, no free speech, and all the mention of the former United States of America is banned. But now, imagine a rumor spreads of a rising young American leader, and that this leader from the heartland is traveling to the nation's capital. And his arrival will actually be on Independence Day, on the 4th of July. And as word spreads, excitement mounts until, in spite of all the government warnings, people start flocking to the streets to welcome the young American leader. Then, as he draws close to the city, someone pulls out a large U.S. flag, and then someone else pulls out a flag, and the stars and stripes are suddenly waving everywhere. And now people start singing, God bless America. And then as the procession nears the doors, a young leader, the, as the young leader draws close, teenagers start shouting, USA, USA. And soon the whole crowd is joining in. Now, if that were to happen today, it would seem like an unusually patriotic Fourth of July parade or pep rally, right? But if it happened, if our country was occupied by an oppressive enemy, it would mean so much more, wouldn't it? It would be an act of defiant faith, an act of open defiance against the oppressor. And so this brings us to today. These are tough times, right? Tough times we're living in, oppressive times, you could say. We're not oppressed by an invading army. We're oppressed by an invading virus. But how are we going to respond? We could give in to fear. We could surrender to despair. But on Palm Sunday, we see that there's another option here. We can resist. We can resist the oppression. We can defy it. But how do we do it? Well, it begins with defiant faith. It begins with our conscious decision to resist the impulse to fear, to gloom, to despair. It begins with a choice to look to our faith and to defy the oppression. Well, how do we do that in practice? Well, the way we do that, the way we demonstrate that, the way we practice it day to day is with defiant praise. We set our hearts on our Lord, we worship our Lord, we praise our Lord. Well, what does defiant praise look like? How might we do it during this time? I'm going to offer three different possibilities real quick. The first is we might want to look to the Psalms. The Psalms are the prayer book, the hymn book of the Bible. And there are many Psalms that are Psalms of praise. Psalms like Psalm 8, Psalm 19, Psalm 23, Psalms like Psalm 42, 46, and 91. Psalms like 100, 117, and 136. Psalms like 139, 145, and 150. If you didn't get that, pause and rewind. The Psalms can teach us how to praise. And here's a particular way of reading the Psalms that I found helpful, helpful to myself and I think can be helpful to you. Lots of times the Psalms will give words that talk about the glory of God, and usually they're in the second person, for example, or the third person, excuse me. For example, the Lord is my shepherd. Well, I would suggest you change that and you make it into the second person, and you speak it out loud as a prayer. Instead of saying, the Lord is my shepherd, you might say, Lord, you are my shepherd. Psalm 46 says, God is my refuge and strength. Perhaps you direct the words to the Lord. Lord, you are my refuge and strength. And you know, in this time where you can take quiet walks alone and there's nobody around you to, hear, you to hear it, it's a great time to say it out loud. There is something powerful 
that happens when we speak our praises out loud. So that's one approach. Here's a second approach. Um, in Psalm 119, 164, we read this. We read, I will praise you seven times a day because of all, because all your regulations are just. The, this idea of praising God seven times a day. Now, I don't know about you, but I'll bet there's something else that you're doing seven times a day or more right now. You're probably washing your hands. And I loved Linda's example and Linda's song to use when washing your hands. And so I'm going to suggest you sing that song, but you can also wash your hands while singing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow, and that works too. So the second thing I would suggest First of all, make sure you're washing your hands at least seven times a day, but then every time you do it, sing a, a song or say words of praise to God. That's the second suggestion. And the third suggestion is indeed sing your praise. There's something powerful about singing songs of praise. In fact, that's what the songs were, many of them. They were songs of praise. Now, my guess is that all of you have some favorite songs of praise. For some of you, that song may have, may have been composed by Bach. For others, it might be an old gospel tune. For some of you, your favorite song of praise has an electric guitars and drums. I don't know what your favorite song of praise is, but I'm willing to bet that even now as you're watching on YouTube, if you search for that song of praise, you will find somebody singing it. So this is what I would like to invite you to do. Not only find a song of praise, but I'm going to invite you to share it. Look around sometime today or sometime in the near future when you have a moment and find your favorite song of praise on YouTube. And then I want you to copy, copy that link and paste it in an email and send that email to the, con to the contact people, to Michelle Vesely or Jeannie Carruthers, or maybe you can try just posting it in the comments of this YouTube. I'd like you to share your name and also maybe just a sentence why you like this song. And I'd like to see how many different songs of praise we can gather, but I'm asking everyone to just pick one. So you have to choose a favorite and submit your song of praise. And then what we hope to do is we're gonna find all those songs of praise, the ones you suggest on YouTube, and maybe we're gonna make a channel. And then everybody can listen to everybody else's song of praise. So it'll be a way not only that we can praise God in song, but we can share with one another in singing songs of praise together. So sisters and brothers, on this joyous Palm Sunday, let me invite you to join with others in defiant faith and in defiant praise. We are not going to let this stinking virus stop us from celebrating our Lord. Let us join together in praise. Amen.
All hail, Redeemer, hail, for thou hast died for me. Thy praise shall never, never fail throughout eternity. And as we prepare for the benediction, let me remind you once again that we would welcome those selfie videos, The Lord is Risen Indeed, and encourage you to share that YouTube link of your favorite song of praise. And so now, as we enter this most holy of weeks, let us walk with Jesus, our Redeemer, as he travels the road to Calvary. Let us be prepared for the great heights and depths of the love of God to unfold before our eyes. May the things we are about to witness fill our hearts with wonder and fill our lips with praise. And now, may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord's face smile upon you right where you are, and may he show you his grace. May the Lord look you full in the face this very moment and fill you with peace.